This video is part of the Parallels Tech Bytes series. And this time we're going to be showing you how effective themes can be, as well as helping you restrict access to content using filters. We start with the Parallels Remote Application Server Console on the left, and I've just navigated Farm and Site and selected Themes from the menu. On the right, you can see what the individual user sees when they log into the theme in question. What you're looking at right now is the default theme presented to all users. As you can see, I've created a second theme already. That's just to show you the kind of effect you can have. If I click on the second browser tab that's open on the right, you can see I've got a different look and feel here. But we're going to create a new theme of our own just to walk through the options that are available to you. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this plus sign. The name I've given this refers to the fact that I'm going to secure access to specific applications based on this theme, because this theme is going to require multi-factor authentication. In Access, I can override the authentication domain, either to make it more convenient for my users, or this might be hosted in a domain that's different to the domain that a user would normally authenticate from, just to make it a little bit easier for them to access. I can add some limits to Active Directory groups. If I click on this plus sign, you can see that's the standard kind of AD users prompt you get there. And I can also use an MFA provider directly with this theme. I'm gonna choose an MFA provider I've already set up. It's very, very easy to do. You can see I've got a whole load of choices here. In my example, I've used Google Authenticator, but like I say, you've got a lot of choice. With messages, I can give my individual users a post logon message that appears as a dialog box they have to say OK to. I've now got a bunch of settings specifically for the user portal. So I can give it a custom URL. I can show the Parallels client download URL as well. If I want to, I could brand this Parallels client download myself and then put a custom location for it here. At the bottom of this menu, you can see there are options for the Windows client. What you can do is you can add branding, add custom messages, even add custom menus to the help menu of the client, and then you can generate the Windows client package. Save that to a destination of your choice, and then that's what this override URL would be for. Now, footer URLs, you can see at the bottom here, I've got a URL that's basically linking to the Aludo homepage. I can click on there, and it takes me to the homepage. In your case, you could have a footer URL here that perhaps takes you to your support site if an individual user is having trouble logging in, for example. We're just going to change the branding. We're going to choose a different logo. As you can see, that logo doesn't look great because the default color for the background is red. I'm going to pop in, change the header background to black. Pop back to branding. And you can see that looks a lot better. The fav icon or fav icon is the icon that appears on a browser tab. So we're going to change that as well. And you can change a bunch of other colors in here as well. Feel free to play around with whatever kind of corporate branding that you want to apply. For language bar, I can choose languages that are relevant to my business. Just to show you that on the right hand side, that appears allowing the user to change in this particular theme. I've selected English, German. French and Italian, but as you can see, you've got a lot more choices than that. Now, a pre logon message appears under the logon box, so you can see on the right hand side here. Post logon message, as you can see, it says override post logon message. We already gave them a post logon message here, so this would only apply if they've authenticated using the user portal rather than a specific operating system client. So if I go to input prompt in English, it says user at domain, and you can see in a box that doesn't have a username in, that's the hint text that appears in there. Secure Gateway allows me to override my site-wide settings. So if I click on override, what I'm gonna do with this particular theme is I'm gonna force the applications to be launched in the browser rather than to try and download or utilize the client that might be on the operating system. That's a really good option if, for example, this is a theme that you're distributing to a set of contractors or a set of people who you don't have management level access to their client machine. 
cookie consent and end user license agreement, you can turn these two boxes on or off. And as we've already said, the options at the bottom relate specifically to the Windows client. Really relevant to any organization who wants to customize and distribute uh, that customized Windows client, but we're not going to go through that in the video today. So once you've selected all that information, we can say OK. And at the bottom, we click Apply, and it applies those changes. As you can see, it's given me the URL to my user portal, so I will type that in now. And there we go, it prompts me for a login. But remember, we chose Enforce Multi Factor Authentication. So after the password prompt, it's now going to prompt my Google Authenticator code. As you can see, we've rebranded it so it's got a different look and feel. But we said we can start using this theme to do more things. So one of those things we can do is apply filtering. As you can see, there's an application here that says MFA only. We've now created a theme that ensures that MFA is used in order for anyone who's accessing this theme. What we're going to basically say is you can only see this MFA only application if you are logging in using this theme. And to do that, we go into publishing, we find this application called MFA only, and then we look at this filtering tab. We're going to call this MFA only. And we're going to deny access to this application unless they're in this theme. So we're just going to click on the plus sign. We've got a whole bunch of choices, as you can see. Theme is just one of the choices you've got. And I'm going to say, if you're not a member of the secure Aluda theme, you cannot see this application. Simple as that. Click Apply to apply the changes again. And it's already done it. If I re-authenticate using the standard corporate authentication, you can see that the application isn't there. If I now re-authenticate using the secure theme and also supply my Google Authenticator code, you can see that I have now got access to that secure application. So it's just one way of applying additional layers of security and filtering things based on themes. I hope you found this useful. Be sure to tune in to the other episodes in our Tech Byte series. Thanks.